It's very sad that my own family were hanging out with people that were Teresa, trying to Teresa, we hurt didn't us. commit mortgage fraud. You did, dollface. Uh, you put, no. like, stop. Uh, I didn't commit stop. mortgage fraud. Stop blaming other people that for the my husband. Okay, but now you're saying taxes. we had something to do with it. Um, Your you brother were hanging and out with people that we never did. It. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, the Brooke Ashley, and today we are here to discuss the Real Housewives of New Jersey, season 13, reunion parts one and two. Yes, it is a double recap. I have so much to say. I already gave you a quick disclaimer on that community tab. If you are a Teresa or a Jennifer Aiden fan, this might not be the video for you, but you are welcome to stick around. But I just wanna let you know beforehand so that you're not caught off guard. I don't care. How you feel about Melissa Gorga, you cannot deny that Melissa Gorga cleared Teresa in these first two parts. Teresa is making no sense. She's making herself look foolish. Jennifer Aiden, you look so dumb. You are not Teresa's mouthpiece. The constant jumping in, oh yeah, uh-huh, that's what that is. Shut up. And I've said this so many times before, but Jennifer Aiden gives me those vibes where she wasn't the cool girl growing up and she's trying to overcompensate by hanging out with a popular girl now in her adulthood. It's embarrassing. And both of these parts showed me that there is clear jealousy on Teresa's part. She is still not over her sister-in-law and her brother joining her show. And I feel like she really wants to be the only woman in Joe's life. That's the real issue as to why she cannot stand Melissa. I'm not saying that Melissa is perfect. I'm not saying that Melissa's not shady herself. But what I am saying is that at the root of why Teresa does not like Melissa, I really truly believe that it's because of jealousy that she feels like Melissa is in her way when it comes to being the only woman in her brother's life. It's this really weird dynamic. But y'all, let me not jump ahead. Let's just jump right on into it because you guys already know that we don't have a minute to spare. Now, in the first part, we open up with everybody arriving on stage. And I have to say, hands down, these were their best looks. I think that Teresa looked good. I love the outfit. That short haircut suited her really nicely. I said, okay, Teresa. Melissa looked amazing, giving us that old Hollywood glam. I was here for it. I thought that Dolores looked beautiful as well. Margaret had a nice gown. And I did like Rachel Fuda's gown. She looked good too. Danielle's dress was cute. Jennifer Aiden, I feel, had the weakest look in my opinion. That's no shade, but I wasn't feeling her gown. I wasn't loving the color. I just felt like she looked kind of matronly. So I thought it was funny when she wanted to call Margaret old lady or old lady energy when I was like, girl, that's what this gown is giving. But overall, definitely Jersey's best looks. And even Andy said the same thing. He was like, you guys look amazing. Now we all know how these reunions start off. Andy always goes around the room. He's making small talk before all the screaming and all the shade occurs. Now, before he can really start the reunion, Teresa's phone starts ringing. We know that Andy hates that but we find out that it's her ex-husband, Joe Judice on the line, and she's talking to him. I think Joe is asking Teresa, what exactly does Jen Aiden's husband do when it comes to plastic surgery? Because his uncle wants to get rid of his eye bags. So now Andy starts talking to Joe as well. He's asking Joe how he's doing. Joe's joking around saying that he has all these girlfriends. Now, Joe, I wanna know, what exactly are you doing for a living that is affording you to have multiple girlfriends. I'm dying to know. Because last I checked, you were trying to make money doing like celebrity boxing matches. Then you were selling sex toys. What are you doing now? But honestly, that's neither here nor there. I really don't care about Joe Judice like that. So we can just move on. So finally, Andy is able to start off the reunion. And now you have Teresa talking about, hey, Andy, can you just feel my heart for a minute? So she grabs his hand. She's like, you feel it? You feel my heart? It's just beating so fast. I'm like, Teresa, you pride yourself on being the OG of your franchise. You claim that you are the star and that you're that girl of this franchise. So you should be used to this by now. This is your 13th reunion. 
So I don't want to hear any of this about, oh, my heart's just beating so fast. Girl, also, a lot of the drama in your life is because of you. So for you to act like you're this innocent victim and oh my gosh, my heart is just beating so fast. I just can't take it. Like, I don't want to hear that. So Andy can already tell from the vibes that it's going to be a real battle between Teresa and Melissa. So he starts it off by asking them, what's the end goal? Like, where do they go from this? So Teresa says, after today, I'm looking forward to closing that chapter. I wish Melissa well, I wish her peace. So Melissa says that she also wants to close this chapter. And then she adds that today, a lot of truth is gonna come out. So now Andy starts asking the light questions. He wants to know how has it been for Teresa since she's married now. So Teresa's like, the biggest adjustment for me was my family hurting us before our wedding day. So Melissa interjects and she's like, excuse me, how did we hurt you? You were the one calling me a cheater this season. Did you remember that? So of course they start going back and forth. And he's like, look, we just started this reunion. We're 10 minutes in. Let's not jump ahead. I screamed when Teresa had the audacity to say, let's act like Beverly Hills one at a time. And when Melissa said, girl, you are not Beverly Hills, that's not happening, so don't even kid yourself. I said, exactly. I said, Melissa, please get her. Also, Teresa, if you watch Beverly Hills and you know that they're not dignified on their franchise either. At their reunions, they're talking over each other. They're cursing at each other. It might be a little less than what you guys do, but please don't get it twisted. They're not talking one at a time on Beverly Hills either. Andy touches on Dina not showing up to the wedding. Remember that Dina was asked to be a bridesmaid. And then at the last minute, she dropped out. And that's why Teresa replaced her with Jen, Aiden, and Dolores. So Andy's asking about the state of their friendship. Teresa says, oh no, it's fine. I mean, yeah, I wish that Dina would have told me sooner that she wouldn't come to my wedding, but it's fine, we're good. Now, personally, I don't believe that. I think that Teresa wants to save face because when it comes to Dina, you can tell she really holds Dina in a really special place. So she wouldn't want people to know that there are problems in their friendship. Now, I did see an article that Dina did a few months ago where she addressed not attending the wedding and she said that she didn't want to be filmed and all that stuff. And then she went on to add that friendships have ebbs and flows. Now, it sounded like Dina was alluding that there might be issues in their friendship, but she doesn't want to outright say it because remember, her and Teresa used to be super close. They were like sisters. And Dina is Adriana's godmother. So I'm sure that if there are issues between them, if there is any tension, they probably want to, you know, focus on that behind closed doors and not let it play out on a public platform. And I respect that. But I don't believe Teresa when she said that, oh no, we're fine, we're good, we're still great friends. I don't know if I believe that. And you could tell that Andy wasn't buying it because he said, well, if Dina didn't want to be filmed, she could have just not signed a release form and we wouldn't have shown her. So he didn't really buy that weak excuse either. And I don't care what anybody says. If that is your really good friend, you consider them like family. I think that any of us would feel a type of way if our good friend decided to skip out on our wedding with a pretty weak excuse. So again, Teresa, I'm just not buying this. I think that Andy was asking some great questions when he asked Teresa, why didn't she feel the need to invite Melissa's mom, Donna, to her wedding? And Teresa says, look, when I was going over my guest list, Melissa's mom and her family, they didn't cross my mind. When it comes to the guest list, I feel like two things can be true at the same time. Yes, it is Teresa's wedding. She can invite whoever she wants to invite. It's her special day. But just out of respect... Melissa's mom really got close to Teresa's father and they would go out. She kept him company. I still believe that Melissa's mom should have received an invite. Just my opinion. Melissa wasn't having it at all. She said, but that's really funny that they weren't on your mind to invite to the wedding, but my family was on your mind when it came time to introduce Louie to a family when your father passed away. Melissa goes on to say that when it comes to Teresa, she uses them when she needs them. And then when she's gotten what she wants, 
it's like, okay, bye. Like, shout out to everybody. I have fun. <laughs> oh! <laughs> shout out to everybody. It's I have fun. Good, I gotta be good. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, they start going at it. And now Teresa says, when I was single after Joe left, they didn't invite me out to dinner one time. Who does that? Teresa? When you say things, please make sure that the other person does not have receipts to prove you wrong. Melissa says, girl, we went out to dinner all the time and we invited you. We have the pictures of you with us with my next door neighbor, Shane. We went out to Charlie's in Bayhead. We see the picture and sure enough, Teresa's right there with all of them. Melissa, Donna, the next door neighbor, Shane, some other friends, and Melissa's sisters. So Teresa says, well, that was one night and I had to invite myself because you never invited me. Who does that? And I was so happy when Andy chimed in and he said, now, Teresa, I remember bumping into all of you when you were just dating Louie and the whole vibe was that you guys are all hanging out and it was a good time. I remember it was, what, last season or the season before last? She had just started dating Louie and her, Joe, and Teresa and Louie all went out somewhere in like the Jersey Shore and they were all having a good time. So I'm like, Teresa, that's a lie right there though that you guys never went out to dinner with Melissa and her family because you did. We saw it on the show two seasons ago, I think. It was either two seasons ago or last season, but you guys know what I'm talking about. My real Jersey watchers know what I'm talking about. But you could just tell that Teresa was not telling the truth. Teresa will take any chance she gets to try and discredit Melissa. She just refuses to acknowledge when Melissa is right about something. So Teresa says, yeah, we were hanging out. We were happy. I introduced him to them. And then she says that her brother is the one who tried to get Louie on the show. So Melissa says, eh, eh, that's not true at all. Louie is the one who was dying to be on this show. Because a few seasons ago, when you guys started dating, when we were on that girls trip, Louie was calling up Joe, begging to crash the girls trip so that he could get some screen time. Because he's always wanted to be famous. Now, I have always gotten those vibes from Louie. I think that Louie is an opportunist. And Teresa, you need to watch out. I think that it's foolish of you to have married this man without a prenup. There are too many allegations against Louis for me to believe that everybody's lying on him. Something in the milk ain't clean. And I believe that Louis was plotting on her in the first place. Because when Melissa revealed that originally Louis wanted to date Alexia, who's on Miami, I said, bingo. I have a theory. I said it on a recent live. I believe that Louis positioned himself to accidentally bump into Teresa when he was down at the shore. I don't believe that he just met her by coincidence. I believe that he knew somebody who knew somebody and said, okay, oh, she'll be here for the next two weeks. Okay, where, where's her house? Okay, bet. I'm going to go rent a shore house a block away from hers. Then when she's, you know, running or doing whatever, I'm going to be in the vicinity and meet her. I don't believe that their meeting was by chance at all. I don't care. If I were Teresa, I would go to the lawyer and draft up a post snub right now. I would be doing something, but I damn sure would not be sitting up there putting my trust in this man. So now Teresa starts calling Melissa a liar. And then she says, you know what? I'm just so happy that after tonight, I'm never going to see your face again. Like you're out of here. One thing about it, I don't care who you are. Andy does not appreciate when these women get beside themselves and they want to act like they're the boss running the show. At the end of the day, everybody on every cast is replaceable. Case in point, look at Nene and Vicky Gunvalson. Don't ever get beside yourself thinking that you're the big star and that the show won't go on without you or that she'll never be off the show. Andy is the one who's making all the hiring and the firing decisions. So for her to be so presumptuous and say, well, after today, you're going to be gone. I said, Teresa, you better hope that you come back because Andy looks so fed up with you multiple times throughout both parts. And also sis, you better hope that you guys all come back anyhow, because you guys are on pause. Both of y'all will be back soon enough because I don't care what anybody says. 
You might hate each other now, but let it be another year before you get another Bravo check. You guys will be begging to come back on and you'll film with each other if need be. That hate might be strong, but when that American Express bill is knocking at your door and the mortgage needs to be paid, you won't care. You have to film with Margaret, Rachel, Fuda, Melissa. You'll film with Frank, your brother, please. So all this big talk about you won't film with her, you don't want to be around her, you're not going to see her face, honey. Let a few months pass by with no Bravo check, like I said. The short segment about Teresa's wedding hair, we don't have to really talk about that. That wasn't much. Personally, I did not love Teresa's wedding hair. I did watch the special. I feel like it was a complete letdown and a waste of money. $10,000 for that? And usually Teresa's hair is always laid. That's one thing about it. Teresa's hair always looks good. I love when she has it wavy. Like, why couldn't she have done that style for her wedding? But that big nest that that was, I said, no, ma'am. Even her girls didn't love the hair. They were like, um, mom, really? Jennifer Aiden, she couldn't even lie that well. And we know that Jen lives up Teresa's ass, but even she couldn't even hide that she didn't like the hair. She's like, oh, I mean, it's something. I say, yeah, girl, that hair did not look good. Now, the Dolores segment was cute. Just talking about her and Polly. Dolores is in love, all right? Like, that man has changed her life. She's in a great relationship. She's in a great space. And she says that it's completely different from when she was with Frank and when she was with David. Now, we find out a few interesting things that Frank is still living with her ex-boyfriend, David. No. Uh -uh. I get the impression that Frank is broke because that makes no sense that this grown man is living with his ex-wife's ex-boyfriend. And even Andy was like, are you serious? Frank and David are still living together? And when he was like, is Frank paying rent? And Dolores said, look, I don't know about their arrangement. I don't know about all that. All I know is that Frank still lives there. That's all I know. Don't ask me anything else. Frank low-key gives me grifter vibes. Ladies, maybe get a word? Hide the money, y'all. There's poor people around. <laughs> With your broke ass. I was shocked to find out that Polly is still legally married to his wife. I said, what's the holdup? And they've been separated for, I think she said, 14 years? I said, Dolores, not you living with this married man. <laughs> and you know I love Dolores. But I said, Dolores, he needs to get a divorce immediately. ASAP. Like, tomorrow. And Dolores said, well, yeah, he's still married. He didn't think that he would ever remarry again. But now, since I came in the picture, now he is looking into the process of getting a divorce. I said again chop chop now you guys know how i feel about danielle i think that she didn't bring anything this season she was a complete flop i think that we could definitely have her replaced if there is a next season i don't need to see danielle come back that might sound harsh but yeah she was a no for me same with rachel fuda as well they both didn't bring a whole lot i would rather see jen fessler as a full-time cast member and have them both demoted but anyhow, it's Danielle's segment, and they're just talking about her brother. Andy wants to get to the bottom of what exactly is the reason for her brother not speaking to her for all this time. He points out that the viewers also have a hard time with this story about her brother cut her off because of Instagram. And she's like, I wish I knew too. I wish I could tell you that it was something else, but that's really the reason. It's because of Instagram and it hurts. So we also find out that her grandmother passed away, I think like a few days ago. And the wake was the day of the reunion and the funeral is tomorrow. So she says that it's gonna be her first time seeing her brother at the funeral. And now she's upset about it. She also brings up the fact that when her brother and his wife had their child, she sent a baby gift and they sent the gift right back. They said, no, nope, we don't want any parts of it. Like, leave us alone. And she said it really hurt her. Now, hearing that made me think of that season seven Beverly Hills reunion when Kim Richards gave Lisa Rinna the bunny back. Remember that? She was like, nope, I can't accept this gift for my grandson. He doesn't have good energy. And then Lisa started crying. <laughs> That's what that reminded me of. 
But I said, you know how petty and you know how angry you must be to return a gift back? I still don't believe this story. I still think that there is something else. I'm dying to find out if her brother ever talks to the press and gives us his side because I really can't wrap my head around a grown man not speaking to his sister over Instagram. And if that really is the story, then Danielle, you should be happy that your brother is cutting you off because I don't want to be talking to anybody who's that crazy where they'd be that petty and immature to cut me off because of some Instagram post. That's ridiculous. Danielle being sarcastic, asking Margaret if she knows anything about her brother. Margaret's like, girl, I don't know anything about your family. I want peace for you and your family. Like, leave me out of this. Then, of course, here goes Jen Aiden trying to stir the pot and be shady. And she's like, oh, so you think that Margaret contacted your brother? Is that what you're saying? I was like, shut up, Jen, please. So now Andy brings up Margaret's comment when they were in Ireland where she told Danielle that if Danielle does not stop acting the way that she's acting, she's never going to have peace in her family. And Danielle started crying because of that. So Margaret says, look, I know that it came off harsh. That wasn't my intention. All I'm saying is that on this cast, the theme is you forget, but you don't forgive. And how can you ever have true resolve if you don't forgive people? So you have Teresa in the background talking about, oh, well, I forgive people. I'm great at forgiveness. I said, now, Teresa, baby, I'm not going to sit up here and let you tell that blatant lie. Because I told you, Teresa, one thing that you and I have in common is that we can hold a grudge. And we are very, very bad when it comes to forgiving people. We will just sit in unforgiveness. I'm not proud of that, but I own it. I know myself inside and out, okay? And one thing about me, if you slight me, it's going to be me and you forever. And you're going to always get it again and again and again. We all have flaws. Nobody's perfect, okay? All God's children got issues. And my issue happens to be unforgiveness. But, Teresa, you and I are very similar in that regard. So why would you even tell that tale saying, oh, I forgive easily? No, you don't. If you forgave, you wouldn't still be harping on the fact that your brother and your sister-in-law got on this show 11 years ago. So again, miss me with the BS, please. And even Melissa said, girl, you are delusional. Like you are forgiving? Are you serious right now? So Margaret jumps back in and she addresses Danielle. She says, look, Danielle, I wish nothing but the best for you and your family. I wish you nothing but peace. And when you came on this show, I was nice to you. I helped you out with your business logo. Like I really tried to give you some advice. So now Teresa jumps in and she's like, oh, that's just so funny because you want to help her, the new girl on the block, but not me. Like, isn't that funny? So Margaret says, Teresa, I tried to help you too, but you stood me up. Now, Teresa, I'm surprised because you're always bragging about how you're the OG and how you're the star of this franchise. So I'm surprised that you would ask a relative newbie on this cast for help. Margaret's only been on this show for what, five or six years? I don't know why you're so pressed about Margaret helping somebody else. Also, you made it clear that you don't even like Margaret like that. So again, why would you expect her help in the first place? So Margaret lets Danielle know that while she was good to Danielle, Danielle wasn't good to her, and that Danielle flipped on her like a pancake. So now Andy wants to know the status of Melissa and Danielle's friendship. And Melissa says, look, I liked Danielle when I met her. I saw myself in her. It's kind of crazy where we are now, but I did like her initially. So of course, Teresa jumps in and she says, you're a newbie. That's why she wanted to be your friend. She was trying to lure you to her side. So now Melissa calls her out about Rachel and she was like, well, what do you think you were doing trying to be friends with Rachel? So they start going back and forth about that. Then Rachel gets brought up and Rachel at one point says under her breath, I don't think that Teresa wants to be my friend. You have Jen jumping in saying, yeah, I don't think she wants to be your friend either. I was like, Jen, do you want a cookie? Congratulations, you are now Teresa's best friend. Like, it is so sad to see somebody so desperate to be in somebody's good graces. Jen Ada reminds me of Ashley Darby when it comes to being friends with Giselle Bryant. Like, she wants to be in so badly. 
And it's so sad. And that's another reason why I feel like Jen Aiden can't stand Melissa because she's jealous of the fact that they're connected because of family. And I think that she always wanted to push Melissa out so that she could be Teresa's number one friend. Again, Jen has a lot of issues, a lot of insecurities that she needs to work out expeditiously. But her adding that comment about, oh yeah, she doesn't want to be your friend. How old are you? Are you in seventh grade? You know what it is about Jen Aiden that I think I dislike her a bit more than Teresa? Because when it comes to Teresa, Teresa, while she might be narcissistic and delusional, Teresa can be very charming. She has her funny moments. Jen Aiden, in my opinion, is just corny. She doesn't have that same charm that Teresa has. She's just all around insufferable. Now Andy reads a viewer question addressing Margaret and Jackie being mean girls to Danielle. Danielle says, yeah, I know. It was really nasty to watch. And they called me a wannabe. And they are right. I am a wannabe. I don't want to be anything like them. I said, oh, girl, how long did it take you to come up with that? Danielle, for somebody who came on this show loud and brash, and you're a tough girl from Staten Island, you don't take any mess. I was really surprised at how you could not handle confrontation. And now you want to sit up here and cry and talk about, oh, they were just so mean and it's just so disgusting. What's they really say about you? I liked how Margaret came through with that quick shade. She said, Danielle, I liked you. I never made fun of you. Whatever I had to say to you, I said it to your face. You had a great first season. Now, Margaret, you don't have to lie. No, she didn't. She was a flop in my opinion. Um, but Margaret goes on and says, you got a ton of endorsements. You should be happy. Why are you upset? Now, when she said endorsements, I automatically knew that she was low key shedding Jen Aiden. And like always, a hit dog will always holler because Jen starts screaming, I don't need endorsements. My life is great with or without this show. Look at Andy. He doesn't even have endorsements. And Andy said, yes, I do. I have a ton of endorsements. I love all of them. I was like, girl, do you not know that he just got that Fresca endorsement? You don't see Andy on commercials. Like, what are you saying? Before you speak, at least do your research. And she felt so dumb when she said, oh, well, anyway, I don't need endorsements. I'm still swimming in Chanel and my life is still good with or without them. I don't care how much money Bill makes. There is no such thing as too much money. I know that you would love to have an endorsement. That only brings more money to your account. And Jen, just because you're dripped in Chanel, it doesn't mean that you wear it well. That is one person who makes Chanel look so tacky. I know that Coco Chanel has to be rolling in her grave. Chanel is such a beautiful brand and here she is. I mean, she makes it look so cheap. When Andy pointed out how surprised he was about Danielle always getting up and walking away and leaving events because she couldn't deal with confrontation, I was so happy he addressed that because like I said a few minutes earlier, if you claim to be so tough, you signed up to be on this show. You know what goes down on The Real Housewives. So for you to be like, oh, well, I just couldn't believe how crazy it got and I wasn't prepared and I thought that Rachel and I were friends and she spun my words. Danielle, just say that you're not witty enough, you're not quick enough, you don't have any reads and you couldn't keep up with the verbal altercations. I will give Jennifer Aiden one thing. She can go toe to toe with people in arguments. And Danielle unfortunately can't because I thought it was pathetic that every time she got into it with somebody, she stormed off. That's not Housewives material. Also, this whole back and forth between her and Rachel at this point, I was so bored. Like I said, it was a dumb fight. I was happy that everybody else said, yeah, you guys are fighting about nothing. Danielle, you blew this out of proportion because you felt embarrassed and you can't handle confrontation and you want to make it a bigger deal than it was. And Rachel, if I'm being honest, going forward, if you guys are asked to come back on the show, I would not waste my time trying to rekindle a friendship with Danielle. That ship would have sailed. We'd be done. At best, we'd be cordial. Hi, bye. How are you? That's it. But the way Danielle turned on you, the way she treated you, calling you a rat, just, I, I didn't like that. And again, it was a stupid argument about nothing. So now as we're nearing the last 15 minutes of this reunion, we get to Melissa's segment. So Andy's talking about her new house. She says that she loves it. I think that Rachel Fuda's husband did their floors. 
And now Andy brings up how there were a lot of critiques about the home because a lot of people didn't like the way it looked on the outside. They thought that it was kind of ugly. They thought it was too many windows. And Melissa says, look, it's my home. We built it from the ground up. I'm the one who's gonna be living in it. As long as I like it, that's all that matters. And she's right. I have to say, I do like this house better than their first house when they joined the show. I thought that that house was so tacky. It looked like an outdated castle, but I think that this house is a lot better. So Andy reads a viewer question asking Melissa if it's true that she moved super close to Teresa and then Teresa immediately moved away. Does she feel like that was intentional? So both Melissa and Teresa say, no, not intentional. I didn't even think about that. But we do find out from Melissa that Teresa moved to her old block. And her new house is only two doors down from where her and Joe Gorga used to live. Now, I was shocked to hear that because if there's so much bad blood and so much hate, why would you even want to live in the same neighborhood that your brother and sister-in-law that you can't stand used to live in? Did she want to live in their neighborhood the whole entire time? Like, again, it's just, it's a really weird dynamic between all of them. It's just, it's strange. There's resentment, jealousy, competition, all mixed in one. The whole issue about Teresa throwing Antonia under the bus about how Antonia missed Melania's Sweet 16 comes up. And Rachel, I need to get on you quickly because when that episode aired, when I was watching that, my first thought was, why would you ask that? You know that there's tension between both sister-in-laws. You know the drama that's been going on for over a decade. You guys are on a cast trip trying to have fun. Why bring the mood down? And when Andy was asking Teresa if she felt like Rachel set her up with that question, and she said, oh, absolutely. I've been on this show for a long time. I know when I'm being set up. Again, it's not your place. You just joined this show. You just joined this friend group. So why even ask that? Next time, sit there and just eat your food because it wasn't a time or the place for all that. And you also know, just common sense, bringing up their kids, that's going to cause even more issues. So Rachel, I do blame you for that whole thing because had you not asked that, you guys could have had a smoother trip. So Andy brings up that they have both talked about each other's kids and how Melissa said that Teresa's girls have hate in their hearts for her. So Melissa says, well, I mean, if you watch the show, it's clear that they don't like me. So Teresa denies it. She's like, no, I think she said that Gabriella wished Melissa a happy birthday. Now, if you read the blogs now, there's all the drama with, with Gia and the other daughters going back and forth with their uncle and aunt on Instagram. Now, when I was watching that episode of Teresa's party and Melissa went over to Gia and Gabriella and Melania, I don't care what anybody says. The girls obviously are on their mom's side and they don't care for Melissa like that. It does not take a rocket scientist to see. You don't need to be an expert to read body language. They're not feeling her like that. They were not happy to be around her. It was real dry. They were like, hi, Zia, Melissa. How are you? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, uh-huh. Like, it was real awkward and real tense. And we all know family drama whether you've witnessed it or you've been in the middle of it, like, you know when one of your aunts, one of your uncles, one of your cousins is being kind of shady, they know when you're being shady to them. Like, we're not dumb. So for Teresa to act like, no, they love you. They love their aunt. I was like, I mean, girl, they might love her, but they certainly don't like her. We don't have to deny it. But overall, that whole situation when Teresa sort of threw Antonia under the bus like that when they were in Ireland. I didn't like that because that's a child. Second of all, Antonia had a cheer competition. She couldn't make it. Melissa has also noted that there have been other events that Teresa's daughters haven't attended and they haven't made a big deal about that. So Antonia should be extended the same grace. I understand that Melania and Antonia are close and that yes, a sweet 16 is a milestone that you can't redo, but sometimes things happen and people miss things. And I'm sure it was not intentional. I was happy to see on the blogs that Antonia and Melania saw each other at prom and they're really close. They gave each other a big hug. So I am glad to see that despite the adults are at each other's throats, that the kids are still okay. 
Thank God for that. But Teresa, I didn't think that was cool for you to kind of blame your niece for not being at your daughter's party. That wasn't right. And if I were Melissa, I would feel a way about that too. Let's be honest. If the shoe were on the other foot, Teresa would be screaming if somebody said that about one of her kids. We know how Teresa is about her daughters. Now at this point, things are getting worse in this conversation. Andy asked Teresa, how did she feel when she watched that scene with Melissa and Antonia in the car where Melissa said, look, whatever happens with me, your dad and your aunt, do not let that affect how you see her and how you see your cousins, like stay out of it. So Teresa says, well, of course she did that because we're filming a TV show. Melissa is angry and now Teresa brings up the remarks that were made on Melissa's podcast where Joe said that if it weren't for them, then Teresa's kids would not have eaten when she was in jail. So Melissa clears it up. She says, look, all I'm saying is that we helped you out because when you were in jail, we helped Joe Judice, your ex-husband, get some money because of the spinoff show. We made sure to film with him. Like we just helped you guys out. That's all we were saying. So now they go back and forth and Teresa says, that's why my own brother only went to see me one time when I was in jail. So Melissa's like, that's not true, Teresa. You know you're lying. You didn't even have his name on the list until after the camera started rolling. Like, why are you making stuff up? Teresa says that she's had Melissa's back for 10 years. Melissa says, girl, I've had your back for 20 years. I'm done. After this reunion, I'm serious. I do not want to hear one word about any of this drama. I want them all to go their separate ways. It's time. We're tired. We're exhausted. We are all mentally drained. We are still bringing up stuff that happened seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 years ago. We are in season 13. You're talking about stuff that happened in season six, season seven. When is enough enough? Andy switching gears and bringing up the comments that Margaret made about how Melissa could find a ball player and leave Joe. And Margaret says for the last time, it was a joke. It's what girlfriends say to each other when their husbands are getting on their nerves. I always joke around that Melissa is J-Lo and if J-Lo can get all these men, then so can Melissa because Melissa is a knockout. She's gorgeous. That's all I meant. And like I said in the earlier recaps, I didn't take any issue with what Margaret said because that is how women talk to each other, especially to their good friends. If their man is acting up, I know my mom and grandma used to always say to me, like, you never let a man get too comfortable thinking that he just has you and that you're never going anywhere. There always needs to be a healthy amount of fear. Like if you get stupid, I'm out the door. So Margaret did not say anything bad. And for Jen to act like, well, you know, I didn't like that. Your ex friend Laura said that you were urging Melissa to leave. Jen, you're so jealous of Melissa. You know good and damn well that Margaret did not mean any harm when she made those jokes. And also, why do you care so much? And Jen is such a low life because finding out that she invited Margaret's ex-friend Laura to her season 13 premiere party. I'm like, why? What was the reason? And you know that Laura is thirsty. She's only doing this because she wants to be on the show. So now you have Jen trying to question Margaret and she's like, if Laura was a great friend to you, Margaret, then why didn't you want her to be on the show? So Margaret says, girl, where have you been? I was trying to get her on the show. For whatever reason, NBC Bravo wasn't feeling her like that and they didn't have her on. Why do you keep saying that? I don't have any power when it comes to who gets fired and who gets hired. They didn't want her. So in turn, she got mad at me and now she wants to air out my stuff. Like I said, when it comes to being on a Bravo production, especially Real Housewives, everybody around you, it seems, turns into a vulture. Because the fact that that was Margaret's best friend for years and she got so jealous that she's not on the show that now she wants to turn on Margaret, that is so incredibly pathetic. Also, if a network isn't interested in you, then obviously you're just not that girl. Move on to something else. But to keep auditioning, then you want to be mad because your friend can't get you on. That's not their issue. And I love how Andy got them all together when he said, now, if Laura fell out with Margaret and she's airing Margaret's dirty laundry all around town, don't you think that the producers would want to 
bring her onto the show if we were interested. Obviously, Laura isn't that girl if she's doing all this and Bravo still wants no parts of her. And I've read in several articles that when it comes to being on Real Housewives, it's more of like, don't call us, we'll call you. Like you have to play hard to get. They don't want women who are thirsty. They want to come to you. They don't want you to be asking them. So Laura, you're doing too much asking to be on the show. Let them come to you. Let it be organic. That's your issue. You're too desperate. Desperation is never sexy, sis. Be a little bit aloof. Be a little bit indifferent. And that's just a tip for every area in life. You get more when you're a little bit detached. You don't care that much. Now, when I tell you I was blown when Teresa brought up how Melissa got on the show, I said, you have got to be kidding me. I said, now, Teresa, I know that you and I share a bond about holding a grudge, but when I'm telling you that you need to let this go and make peace, it's a problem. When Teresa said, that's exactly how my sister-in-law Melissa got on, why don't you bring Laura on then? Because Melissa got on, I said, Teresa, the fact that you are still bitter about Melissa being on this show. At the end of the day, Teresa, nobody can ever take away the fact that you were on since season one. Just that alone, you should not be bothered with Melissa. And yes, I know we will never agree on what exactly happened. I know a lot of people feel like, no, Melissa was real sneaky about how she got on. The truth is somewhere in the middle. But what I will say, for Teresa's peace, for her sanity, make peace with the fact that Melissa is on the show and she's been on now for a decade. You really sounded insane to bring that up. It was so bad that even Andy was like, you've got to be kidding me. Dolores said, this is old. Why are we still talking about this? And Jen Aiden was determined to piss me off at every turn when she said, let's clear this up, Andy. Did Melissa reach out to you to join the show? And I said, who are you to question anybody? Also, Jen, you weren't even a thought when Melissa joined this show. You joined this show, what, season nine? So why are you questioning anybody about what happened in season three? Andy says, no, none of that happened. I saw her audition tape. I thought that she was cute. I thought that Joe was funny. And they both had a spiral staircase, just like Joe and Teresa did in their home. And we said, let's do it. So Teresa's mad and she's like, so that's why you brought them on? I said, sweetheart, at the end of the day, Andy is the boss. So you questioning him about why he brought Melissa on is really none of your concern. As long as you're getting your Bravo check, that's all you need to be focused on. All the opportunities that this platform has afforded Teresa, there should be no reason why she's so angry about Melissa being on this show. Now, on the flip side, I will say this. I've always believed that Melissa was most likely jealous of the fact that her sister-in-law was on TV because remember, Melissa wanted to be a singer. So I'm sure her and Joe were sitting around talking about, oh my gosh, we got to get you on this show. It's a hit show. All the money, all the doors that it could open. You want to be a singer? I really think that they definitely were thirsty to be on this show. So I'm not going to sit up here and deny the fact that there probably was some jealousy on Melissa and Joe Gorga's part. But with all that being said, I do need for Teresa to get over that once and for all. We should not still be talking about season three's mess in season 13. So as we close out the last few minutes of the first part, Melissa and Teresa are going back and forth about storylines. Teresa says that when Melissa and Joe joined the show, she was their storyline. And Melissa says, girl, when we joined the show, we were your storyline because all you did was talk about us. Even Andy agreed. Now, when it comes to storylines, I feel like all of them have used each other for storylines. This drama keeps checks in their pockets. Say what you want. They have all benefited from this feud because it's all that they all talk about. I was disgusted and shocked when Teresa brought up Jacqueline Larita and she said, I found out from Jacqueline that you and my brother were hanging out with Joe Judice's ex-business partner who put us in jail. And then she closes it out by saying that she believes that Melissa and Joe are the ones who put her in jail. They're like, excuse me? I said, Teresa, you have hit a new low. 
Blame your ex-husband. He's the one who forged those documents to get you into that big home. And look what happened. You guys both went to jail and he can't even come back to the States. But how dare you blame your sister-in-law and your brother for what your ex-husband did? And now you want to talk to Jacqueline Larita? You guys couldn't stand each other. You hated her. When she left this show, you guys were on terrible terms. It's the audacity. And let's be real. The only reason why Jacqueline Larita is trying to get back in Teresa's good graces because she wants to be back on this show because she needs that money. Remember that their house had gotten foreclosed on. Chris's business went belly up. He went bankrupt. Remember that? And they're now living in Vegas. Something tells me that Jacqueline is thirsty and she wants to get back on this show because she misses that fame and she misses that money. Because I don't understand how you go from hating Teresa. Teresa is a monster. She's a narcissist. Now all of a sudden you guys are hanging out now like a mess. And now you want to turn on Melissa and Joe Gorga saying that they're the ones who sent Teresa to jail. I have no respect for Jacqueline Larita. I was annoyed that her name even got brought up in the first place. Let's leave the flops in the past, please. So we jump right into part two with the BS. Even Andy's surprised. He's like, so you really believe that your brother and your own sister-in-law are responsible for putting you in jail? So she's like, yes, yes I do. Cause they were hanging around people who were trying to hurt me and my ex-husband. So she goes on to say that Jacqueline and her husband, Chris Larita, confirmed it. I said, Teresa, I know your arm is hurting from this reach. You know good and damn well that your brother and sister-in-law have nothing to do with you being in jail. First of all, you were claiming that Caroline Manzo was the one who put you behind bars. Now all of a sudden, no, it's not her, it's you guys. Just the hate that you have for them is, it's on a different level. This is true madness then now you want to sit up here and blame them for what your ex-husband did. So of course, Teresa loves playing the victim and she says, it's just so sad that our own family is trying to hurt us. You know, at this point, if I were Melissa, I wouldn't even talk to Teresa going forward at this reunion. I would say, Andy, any questions directed to that one, I don't want to speak to her. Like, just skip them because there is no getting through to Teresa. Teresa wants to make up her mind about things. She doesn't want to hear any facts. She doesn't listen to reason or logic. And there's no point. Why waste precious breath on somebody who doesn't like me, determined to make me out to be the villain, and somebody who just can't reason? I think that Teresa has the logic of a toddler. Like she does not behave like a woman who is 51 years old. She's very immature and it's clear that her parents coddled her and told her whatever she wanted to hear. And I was happy that Melissa was not here for it. She said, baby, you're the one who committed mortgage fraud. You deal with it, doll face. Take accountability, take some ownership. But me and my husband are not responsible for your behind being in jail. I said, exactly. Teresa wanted to act like she was so rich when she wasn't. Teresa continues on by adding that after the reunion airs, Jacqueline Larita is going to confirm all this. So Margaret jumps in and says, you do know that while you're going up for Jacqueline Larita, she's texting Jackie and saying all these bad things about you. Melissa pulls out her phone. She reads the text. And when I tell you that Jacqueline was going in on Teresa, she was like, she's still ugly. Even with all the facelifts and the boob jobs, she's stupid. She's an idiot. She's a narcissist. She's a monster. And Teresa's like, well, you know, whatever, whatever. Dolores, I was confused when you jumped in saying, oh, Melissa, Jacqueline Larita is going to get you sleep with one eye open. What is Jacqueline Larita doing to anybody? Also, all Melissa is doing is showing the receipts that Jacqueline was indeed talking badly about Teresa. Teresa, that's who you want to be associated with? You want to be friends with somebody who is talking poorly about you, calling you ugly, and saying that you're a monster and you're this, that, and the third? That's your good friend? If anything, you should be like, oh my gosh, I'm embarrassed. I Let me block her. Let me curse her out. Like, there's no way that I'd be going hard for somebody who is in everybody else's DMs and messages trash talking me to everybody around town. And a side note, I never liked Jacqueline. I always thought that she was boring, dull. She was always crying all the damn time. She was too much of a flip flopper. She always acted so weak and so spineless. She acted like she could never stand up to anybody. I just couldn't stand it. And Teresa acts just like a child saying, well, that doesn't matter because she called you a whore. 
I said, okay, and first of all, Jacqueline is just so desperate to be back on this show. So she's saying anything to anybody. Teresa, it doesn't negate the fact that you still look dumb taking up for somebody who's bad mouthing you and doesn't even like you like that. And also there are worse things that you could say about somebody. You can never make me feel bad about what I do in my bedroom. So those kind of reads, I don't care about that because that's not really a read. But what she was saying about you mocking your looks and your intelligence and how you're a narcissist, that would hurt. Now we do switch gears and we talk about Rachel. I'm not gonna hold you. Rachel's segment was boring. Like I said, I don't think that she or Danielle brought a whole lot. I wouldn't be sad if they don't return back for season 14. Andy brings up the whole bad nose job comment that Jen Aiden made earlier on in the season. So Jen says, let me just clear that up because I wasn't trying to insult her. I only said that after I felt like she ambushed me at Teresa's party. So Jen continues on by saying that she had asked Rachel when they had first met, had she watched the show before? And Rachel said that she hadn't. And Jen caught her in a lie. She was like, no girl, you were a fan because you have a fake Finsta account by the name of Bravo Lover 123 Now, one thing about it, I'm going to need for all these women who join the show to stop lying about, oh, I don't watch the show. Why would you join a show if you had never watched it before? That's cap. Second of all, stop trying to deny that you're a fan of the show. You are. If you watch Bravo, then you know that you watch a Housewives franchise. You might not watch all of them, but I damn sure know that you've watched a few of them. So please miss me with that lie about, no, I didn't watch the show before I joined. Yes, you did. You were a fan and you were sitting by your TV saying, oh my gosh, I should be on that show. And you saw that Rachel was low key embarrassed because she didn't say anything when Jen outed her about having that fake Finsta account and actually being a big fan. I said, Rachel, next time just own it. There's nothing wrong with being a fan of the show, but don't try to lie and act like, no, I didn't watch before. Like I didn't even know about this show until they came to me. Girl, don't do that. We pulled your card. A lot of you girls are fans. No, all you girls are fans who are dying to be on the show too. So again, enough. So now Rachel interjects and she's like, let me clear something up. Jen, you went to my doctor to get your nose redone. So Jen says, well, that's not all the way correct because yes, your doctor called me and he offered to fix my nose, but I turned him down. So Rachel says, well, that's not true, girl. He definitely tweaked your nose. Jen denies it. She's like, Andy, she's lying. I have the video of my nose. I can show you. Andy was like, I don't want that. <laughs> when I tell you Andy was not here for Jen Aiden. And it was at this point where Jen went on and on and on. She did not take a breath between sentences. So Rachel says, Andy, can you make her stop talking? And Andy says, don't worry. She'll eventually run out of gas, but just let her keep talking. I feel like Andy views Jen Aiden the same way that he views Dorit, where they're both super long-winded and just super boring and just super annoying. I think that he's like, you know what? Just let him talk. Just, just let him go. <laughs> Cause he's always yawning every time Dorit speaks. Cause Dorit can't get to the point. It's like Dorit, the point is here and you're all the way down here. And I need you to meet us right here. <laughs> but they finally move on and they start discussing Rachel's journey to adopting Jaden. We do find out that the adoption has been finalized. So she's happy about that. And now the whole issue of Jaden's birth mother gets brought up because she's been talking to the blogs, pretty much bashing Rachel, saying that Rachel only did this for the show. So Dolores jumps in and says, she's been talking about this for years about adopting him. So it's definitely not for the show. So now Andy brings up the birth mother's claims that she's been blocked from seeing Jaden. So Rachel says, let me clear that up right now. That's not true at all. Jaden is the one who's made it clear that he doesn't want to see her, but nobody's blocked her from anything. But Rachel does reveal that Jaden's birth mother was allegedly contacted by Louis. And Teresa's like, wait, what? This man has hired a private investigator, Bo Deedle, to investigate everybody in this cast. And you're telling me that you don't believe or you don't know what's going on about him contacting Jaden's birth mother. This has Louis written all over it. It's just so sad how a lot of these shows take a turn for the worse and how things get so dark so quickly because I understand some light shade, some arguments, but when it gets to this point where we're contacting birth mothers and, and threatening people's children, that's when we've gone to a new low.
and I don't care what anybody says, I don't trust Louis and Teresa, you need to watch out. So Andy's really curious about this. He's asking why on earth would Louis track down the birth mother? Teresa keeps saying, I don't know, I don't know. Rachel brings up Bo Deedle, the private investigator. And Margaret's like, yeah, he was saying that all season long. Like, who does that? So Margaret makes it clear that she's never hired any private investigator. And now Teresa says, well, that's because you don't have the money. I was like, Teresa, are you insane? So now you're trying to make this a status symbol. Because you don't hire a PI, then that means that you don't have the money. Listen to yourself for a minute. And let me know if that makes sense in your pea brain. So at no point you don't think this is weird that your new husband is investigating everybody in your friend group. That's not strange to you? And here goes Teresa saying, well, Margaret, you started all this last year. So Margaret says, girl, are you serious? You apologized to me for last year. So Teresa says, no, I didn't. I only apologize for throwing stuff at you. I was like, oh my God. I, I just, uh, it took everything in me to do this recap because I was getting so frustrated. Talking to Teresa is talking to a brick wall. There is no getting through to her. Melissa jumps in and she says, Teresa, you're such a liar. So now she starts imitating Teresa about being all namaste. And so they go back and forth and Melissa had me screaming. She said, girl, if I could find the namaste, I would stick it up my ass. <laughs> I'm not even gonna hold you. They can bring Melissa back for next season. I was here for it. I said, Melissa, Melissa earned her check. Melissa was on a roll. I have never seen Melissa this lit before. I mean, her reads were on point. She had Teresa speechless multiple times. Again, I was here for it. I said, this is the Melissa that I wanna see. Cause any other time, Melissa can be kind of dull. But I said, okay, Melissa. So now it's time for the friends to join them. We have Jackie and Jen Fessler. And when I tell you that Miss Jen Fessler said she's not playing, she wants to be camera ready for next season, Mama went out and got that face pulled. She said facelift, boob job, nose job, a little lipo, weight loss. I mean, she's on that Ozempic. I said, well, come through. They were all like, damn girl, you look good. She said, well, yeah, because I wanna make sure that you ask me back for next season. I said, we are here for an honest queen. Jen said, I'm not playing around. I need to secure the bag. And let me tell you something. That Ozempic is Ozempying, all right? Because Jen Fessler snatched. Dolores, too, snatched. And Miss Margaret, because Margaret, when I saw you at the Dancing Queens premiere party, you were even more snatched than when I saw you at BravoCon, all right? I said, that, that Ozempic is working, honey. I mean, I know the side effects might not be ideal, but I said, for the time being, though, the girls on Ozempic are looking good. <laughs> so now Andy turns to Jackie. He's like, hey, Jackie, how did you feel about returning as a friend of and not a full-time cast member? And she says that it was hard, but she realizes that she was not in the space to be a full-time cast member because she was still in recovery. Now, I think that Jackie looks great. And I love how her face has filled out. She looks more radiant. She looks more youthful. Like, she looks good. And you can tell that she's in a much better place mentally, physically. So I said, good for Jackie. But I have to say, for Jackie to have been demoted, she was in a lot of the episodes. Like, we did see her at all the events and all the parties. So it's not like she missed out on a whole lot. But all in all, it's still a good gig. Like, I would not be complaining. Friend of or full time, as long as I'm in the number, okay? <laughs> It's still a fabulous platform and a fabulous opportunity. That's how you have to look at it with the spirit of gratitude. But now Andy's asking Jackie how she feels about women going on Ozempic, especially her castmates. So she's like, look, I don't fault anybody for wanting to lose weight and look their best. But what I will say is that there are some negative side effects. The minute you go off of it, you gain all the weight back. So I think that people should, you know, 
just be a little bit careful and not go to such extremes just for vanity's sake. And you saw Dolores' face when she was saying that she was looking like, girl, bye, I'ma still be on this Ozempic. <laughs> she was not trying to hear anything that Jackie was saying. But I said, Jackie's right. At the end of the day, there will be side effects. So while it might be all good now, just watch out, slow down, because you don't know what the side effects can be. And you want to make sure that you're not in a worse off position just because you look real good for a few months. But honestly, anything that's too easy, especially when it pertains to weight loss, nine times out of 10, you are going to gain that weight back like that. Like your best bet is to, you know, keep a balanced diet and exercise. But it's almost like a juice fast. Like, you know, you lose like 20 pounds in one week just drinking juice all day. Then the minute you get off that fast, you're starving and the weight comes right back. And usually nine times out of 10, you gain double the weight back because your body's just so hungry. So I get why Jackie's saying you might want to slow down with it because the side effects might not be the best. But we learned that Jackie's coming out with a book and it's called The Weight of Beautiful. And I think that her book will be helpful to people who are struggling or who have struggled with eating disorders. I'm intrigued to hear Jackie's story. Again, I'm happy that Jackie seems to be on a better path. She looks healthy. She looks good. Kudos to Jackie. Now they start talking about the Ireland trip. And of course, they joke around about who can chug down beer faster, Jackie or Jen Fessler. Everybody says Jackie hands down. Jackie's been doing this for seasons, okay? And yeah, if you've watched past seasons when Jackie first joined, Jackie would always chug some beer down. So I say, yeah, without a doubt, it's Jackie. So now they bring up when they all got drunk at that one pub and when Melissa made the joke about how she wants to drunk dial her ex, of course, you have Teresa saying, I mean, who says that? I would never say that. This is a woman who's a mother and a wife. Like, I'm sure my brother would not appreciate you saying that. So Melissa's like, girl, you think that I would be serious saying that in front of you of all people? You've been trying to break me and your brother up for years, so I damn sure would not say that being serious. Like, I was joking around and you know that. Teresa, of course, can't help herself talk about, oh, no, like, who says that? So Melissa says, girl, you're out here calling people the C word, but yet you want to get on me because I made one little joke. And so she's like, well, I had a right to call her that because she was talking about my daughter. Now, we all know that she's referring to when her and Jackie got into it that season, when Jackie made that analogy about Gia. I was like, Teresa, once again, just admit that you hate Melissa. You hate her because there's some jealousy there. You know good and well that she's not trying to cheat on your brother. But Melissa, I need you to take ownership because you know when it comes to Teresa, you can't joke around like that. You and Teresa don't have that relationship. You know that Teresa hates your guts. So why even add fuel to the fire? She's not in your corner. She never will be in your corner. So again, I wouldn't have joked like that in front of her. Now at this point, the husbands arrive and it's divided. Like we see Louie and Bill all talking and joking around. And then we see Frank, Joe Gorga, and John Fuda in one dressing room and they're talking. Now you know it's bad when all the husbands are taking sides and there's bad blood between them. I am so anxious for this third part. Like I can't wait to see what goes down between Frank, Joe Gorga, Louie, like I can't wait. But now we reach the Margaret segment. Andy wants to know where does her relationship with Jan's kids stand? Things are still rocky, unfortunately. We know that Jan passed away, sadly, last summer. And while she saw her kids at the funeral, there wasn't really much that was said. Like it was still rough. So she's teary out about that. And we find out that she wished that she would have adopted them when they were younger. So now Andy reads a viewer question asking Margaret, why did she make a big deal about Teresa saying that she's a better friend than she is an enemy when that's been her tagline and Jackie has said that about her too. So Margaret's like, well, it wasn't that she said that. It's the fact that she was warning Danielle and Rachel about me. That's what I didn't like. Now, Margaret, as much as I like you, I do feel like you made a big deal about it. I would have let that roll off my back. You know how Teresa is. Also, 
you have said that many times before that you are a better friend than an enemy. So I would just lean into that. I would let people think that I'm this, you know, big deal. And if you cross me, it's going to cost you. Like, I'd rather you think that than think that I'm some weak pushover. I did feel like that talking point went on for a long time. I was like, okay, it's really not that interesting. They said that Margaret's a better friend than an enemy. Let's move on. So now Andy reads another viewer question asking Jen, why does Jen always say that Margaret has all the tea on everybody? Do you think that Margaret has Google alerts on everybody on the cast? So Margaret's like, no, I definitely don't. It just sort of finds me. It kind of just drops right in my lap. Now, we all know how it works. When you're on a reality show, you have people coming out the woodworks trying to give you tea about your other cast members. Like, that's just how the game goes. So for them to act like, oh, Margaret has all this tea on people, she has all this dirt, you guys have dirt too. So Margaret at this point is annoyed and she says, other than revealing Bill's affair, what have I really revealed on this show? So Teresa says, well, you revealed about the stuff going on with my boyfriend at the time, Louis. First of all, Teresa, that was already in the press. Whether or not Margaret said anything, it was still out there. So you sound crazy to say that. Again, it's anything to blame somebody else. Blame your man. Page six in the Daily News, they were still gonna be posting these stories about Louis, whether Margaret had opened her mouth or not. Are you mad at the publications for reporting on the stories? Like, again, Teresa, let's just be real for a minute. And then when Teresa said, and Margaret's also the one who started the Evan and Jackie cheating rumors, and Margaret said, hold on now, that's a bold-faced lie. You're the one who started that whole entire mess. So now Teresa says, because of my brother, he heard it from Melissa because Margaret told Melissa. So at this point, Andy brings up the whole topic of Margaret's ex-friend Laura yet again. I said, for somebody who we haven't seen before, Laura has been talked about so many times. I'm tired of hearing about this mysterious woman. She's not on the show. She's not a friend of. She hasn't appeared in one scene. So why are we even talking about her? So Margaret says, look, we were great friends. I was trying to get her on the show. Obviously, Bravo, NBC, you guys weren't into her. And it felt like she became more interested in being on the show than being friends with me. And that's where things went left. Then she says that somebody told Laura the way to get on the show is to create drama. So that's why she contacted Teresa and Jen Aiden. Now, Margaret, I hope you realize that Laura was never your friend. She was always jealous of you because anybody who cannot be happy for you and your blessings, that's not a friend, that's an enemy. And the fact that because you were unable to get her on the show, she's mad at you and she wants to air out your dirty secrets, that's evil. I don't care how you slice it. So now Andy wants to know, why did Jen contact Laura? Why does she want to hear her out? So Jen says, well, I was still angry about the whole cheating being exposed. And one thing that I'm really gonna need Jen to realize that none of this is Margaret's fault. That is Bill's fault. Bill is your husband. And regardless of how you feel about Margaret, He's the one who you made vows with. Not Margaret, not the other woman. So you being mad at everybody else except that man is ridiculous and it is peak pick me behavior. I cannot stand how male identified Jennifer Aiden is. It's so infuriating to watch. How are you mad at this woman for exposing your affair, but you're not mad at your husband for getting with somebody else while you guys are married? You sound insane. That's real low self-esteem, low self-worth behavior. Be mad at your husband. He's the one who broke his vows. And rest assured that even if Margaret didn't say anything about the affair, it was going to come out eventually because those kind of scandals always come out when you step foot on reality TV. So don't even kid yourself saying, well, it's Margaret, and if Margaret hadn't said anything, it wouldn't have been exposed. Girl, if you want to tell yourself that lie at night, then be my guest. But I can assure you, I'll bet money on it, that if Margaret hadn't have said anything, the other woman or somebody else would have exposed Bill for the cheating. So anyhow, Jen says that that's the reason why she decided to give Laura a little listen. I was like... Oh. Just such loser behavior. But anyhow, we learned that Jen Aiden had already told Melissa this rumor 
when she had her 45th birthday party, she had invited Joe Gorga and Melissa, and she told her then. So Andy, along with everybody else, is confused. He's like, so if you already told Melissa this prior to filming, why did you tell Danielle like it was this new secret? And then when Danielle wanted to tell Melissa, you were like, oh my gosh, no, you can't tell her. Like, this makes no sense. And I was confused too. I said, somebody enlightened me on the logic because why are we bringing up some old drama that we already discussed off camera months before filming started? Like, this sounds crazy. Jen made no sense when she said, well, the reason why I said it on camera was because that was the narrative that was playing out. Huh? The whole entire time, this season was focused on the drama between Louie, Teresa, Melissa, and Joe Gorga. I don't remember hearing anything about this cheating stuff until you brought it up to Danielle when you guys were in Ireland. And also, this cheating rumor is so old because I remember a few seasons ago, they were saying that she was making out with some other guy. Y'all just want to break this woman up so bad. Like, it really pains you that... Joe Gorga is madly in love with his wife still after all this time and your husband's in the pool house every single night because he can't stand to be around you. And also because you want to be in Teresa's good graces, you're willing to do anything against Melissa. So now Andy wants to know how Danielle feels and he's like, Danielle, how do you feel knowing that Jen already told Melissa all this news? Do you feel set up? So Danielle is sitting there dazed and confused. She's visibly hurt, but she's trying to save face. She's like, well, I didn't know any of this. Did you guys set me up? Then she says, I don't feel set up. I believe that they didn't set me up. I'm nobody's pawn. Now, Danielle, that's so funny because we see you later on when your husband was coming out and you pulled him into that bathroom and you said, I was set up. So you were obviously hurt by what your two new friends did. They really made you look stupid. So Andy goes around the room and he's like, raise your hands if you believe that there's any truth to this cheating rumor about Melissa and this guy in the back seat. Nobody raises their hands, but of course, Jen Aiden has to say something. She says, well, all I'm gonna say is that I believe that Margaret told this woman this rumor about Melissa. And when I tell you that at this point, Andy was beyond fed up, you can tell that Andy's getting really tired of hosting these reunions because at this point, Melissa and Teresa are going back and forth. They will not shut up. He's like, can you guys be quiet? He's like, shut up. I'm trying to ask the next question. They keep going back and forth. They're ignoring him. He's like, you guys are acting like kindergartners. Like, can you guys grow up? And he was at his wit's end. I actually felt sorry for him. And when Teresa said, I can't wait to never look at your face again, I'm thinking you do know that the sentiments are the same on her part too. Like you are aware that Melissa probably can't wait to not see you ever again either. Like, please don't think that you're doing her a disservice by not seeing her again. Now flipping back to the husbands in the dressing room, child, it's about to be a whole showdown. We find out from Frank that Frank also has beef with Mr. Louie. And he's like, you know that my son Frankie was working for him. All of a sudden, Louie's business mysteriously closed down. And he didn't even have the balls to tell Frankie what happened. So I'm pissed about that. Like, you don't mess with my son. Right there, that's a red flag. What do you mean that your company shut down and you didn't even call your employees to let them know what happened? I don't care what anybody says. Teresa has made a big mistake marrying this man and deep down inside she knows it, but she's too embarrassed to say it. Now we flip right back to the women and now it's Jen Aiden's segment and he's asking Jen about the whole coffee reading and remember that whole mess? Obviously Jen had told the coffee reader what was going on because she was saying stuff that Jen was obviously feeding her. Jen gave the most long-winded answer that made no sense. She says that the coffee reader used to be Teresa's father's nurse who took care of him. And she asked Jen if she was walking into the lion's den that day. And Jen said, yes. What does the fact that she used to be Teresa's father's nurse have to do with you telling her what was going on in the group. And that was the only reason why she knew what to say at that reading. The reading was BS. Andy now wants to know about Bill and Jen's marriage now. Where does it stand? Has that therapy session helped? 
Does Bill want to go back to therapy? Jen says that that one session did wonders for them, how their marriage is just great right now, and she's not going to push Bill about going back to therapy. So I said, Jen, you were complaining after that first session about how you guys need to go back. Now, all of a sudden, it's that one session did wonders for us. Oh, we're just great. We're better than ever. It's so phony. Nobody's buying it. You're trying to convince yourself that you're happy in that marriage. And I think it's so funny how so many Jen Aiden fans want to say, well, that's what happens in a long-term marriage, and it's not always sunshine and rainbows, and um, you're not being realistic. Listen, I don't want to hear that. I think because I saw such a great example of a healthy and loving marriage, that's why I'm biased because my dad was always happy to be around my mom, all right? Like, I'm not saying that I know the, all the ins and outs, but all I'm saying is that he was happy to be around her. Like, he was in love with my mom. I don't see Bill being so happy to be around Jen. And my parents were married for, what, 32 years before my dad passed away? So I don't want to hear any of that, well, that's what happens, and the feelings fade after all that time, and you wouldn't know, and X, Y, Z. Mm, maybe for other people, but there are some people who do have happy and healthy marriages for a long time and they actually do like being around their spouse. They may not have the same intense feelings of just, oh my gosh, you know, like I want to rip your clothes off when I see you every minute, but there is like a healthy, I feel, balance of love and respect. I don't get mutual respect when I look at Bill and Jen. I don't. I think that they both look miserable. And that's not because I don't care for Jen, but just as someone looking objectively, I do not see a happily married couple. And you can fight me down in the comments, that's fine. I would love to get the opinions of my married subscribers. Let me know down below. I just feel like there should be a basic love and respect like you want to be around your spouse no matter how long you guys have been married. Just my two cents. But Bill always going in the pool house and then that weak excuse that Jen said, she said, well, yeah, he explained it to me. He said, babe, I'm around people all day. I have a high stress job. Then I come home to five kids and your dad and the dog and the nanny. It's a lot. I need to decompress for a while. So I understand it now. And I'm thinking, but... Jen, you have to do that all day. You have to be around your kids and your father and the nanny all day. So if you can do it, he'll be all right if he has to be around his family. And I understand he needs to decompress, but to decompress, you know, for four or five hours, that's unacceptable. I can understand going in the pool house for an hour or two hours and you come in, join the family for dinner. But when you're in there for the majority of the night and then the kids are already in bed, that's ridiculous. And then when Jen said, I'm just so happy in my marriage, okay? I wouldn't change him or change us for the world. I was like, Jen, it must be really hard to live in an alternate reality. Like you must get tired of lying to yourself and pretending like it's all good when you know that deep down inside you're you're upset about it. So now Andy reads a viewer question asking Margaret if she can understand why Jen is upset with her about the affair coming out. So Margaret says, I can understand it, but I will not be held responsible for how it's affected her children. Now, Margaret, me and you are right here, but I'm gonna take it one step further. I would not be apologizing for a damn thing. This man almost broke up his family with his actions. Why am I apologizing for that? It was gonna come out one way or the other. Your husband puts you in this position and then you wanna say, it's your fault, Margaret, because my daughter, Olivia, wanted to be a Broadway star. Now she wants to be a love doctor. Once again, I'm sorry to hear that, but that's Bill's fault. Bill should have thought about that before he decided to step out on his wife. I'm so sick of Jen, I don't know what to do. Like, I really can't stand her. Andy reads another viewer question asking Margaret, why did she call Jen Aiden a drug addict? Margaret says, I was saying that when your vice is your whole lifestyle, that's when it's a problem. So here goes Jen talking about Margaret, you're an old lady. You have old lady energy. And let me just say this, the camera does not do Margaret justice because in real life, Margaret does not look old like that. Margaret is actually pretty. The body is snatched. 
I said they need to be sued the way that they film Margaret because they really don't do her right at all. In person, she looks completely different. So they all want to come for her saying that she's an old lady and she's not cute. I said, y'all are lying because I've seen Margaret. And you guys know I wouldn't lie. If Margaret did not look good, I wouldn't say anything. But Margaret does look good. And like I said earlier on, Jen, your dress was giving old lady energy, so not too much. So now Andy reads another viewer question addressing the hypocrisy with Jen Aiden being mad at Margaret about her revealing Bill's affair, but why did Jen feel the need to reveal this alleged cheating rumor about Melissa? Jen had nothing to say. She gives this weak apology. Then she says that there was a woman on TikTok already talking about this alleged affair. I was like, okay, Jen, whatever you say, anything to deflect and not take ownership for what you've done. So you want to cry about somebody revealing what your husband did, but you had no problem spreading this rumor about Melissa. Andy now reads another viewer question asking what's the status of Margaret and Teresa's friendship because they started off this season so good, Margaret went to the wedding, but now it seems like they've been trading shots on social media and that they're no longer friends. So Margaret says, we were good all season long until that finale episode when I have somebody screaming Bo Deedle in my face. Like, who does that? Margaret reveals that ever since filming wrapped, a lot of things have went down. Her child got this threatening call at work and she pulls out her receipts and we find out that it was Louie. Louie was calling up her kid and she's like, nobody would know where my kid works. Nobody would even know his number. But somehow, some way, Louie got his number and left this really threatening call. So Teresa's denying it. She's like, uh-uh, I don't believe that. Louie did that? Like, why would he do that? So here goes Teresa saying, well, we've all got in really crazy hack calls before. Like, you know, how do you know that it's Louie? Baby, again, I love that Margaret had those phone records. She said, this happened on April 13th. Louie called my child up threatening him. I don't appreciate that. I thought it was cowardly of Teresa to keep saying, well, talk to Louie about that when he comes out. You know, talk to him about that. So Melissa jumps in to defend Margaret. And now you have Teresa insulting her. And she's talking about Melissa's canceled. I said, girl, you can't cancel anybody. What are you saying? If Melissa's canceled, then you damn sure are canceled. You should have been canceled when you and your ex-husband were out here committing all that fraud to get that house. And you see how Teresa does not want friends. She just wants fans like Jennifer Aiden. Because when Dolores jumped in, she was like, I was so shook when I heard this. So Teresa says, well, why didn't you tell me? So Dolores was like, well, Margaret told me that you knew about this. So Teresa's upset and she's like, well, you're my friend. I'm just surprised that you wouldn't tell me. I said, see, here we go. Here we go. I will not be surprised if Dolores and Teresa fall out. Because one thing about it, Teresa wants yes men. So now Margaret's like, I never want to see Louis's face. He's evil. He's a sham. And now Teresa's like, girl, you're the devil. I was like, Teresa, if you don't look in that mirror. I believe that Louis wants her to be isolated from her family. I think that he loves the fact that Teresa's on the outs with Joe. And I think that he's going to use that to his advantage. I really believe that Louis is in this marriage. I think that he has ulterior motives. And he knows that if her family is around, they're going to be able to convince her to leave him and say, Teresa, something's not right, but he wants to keep her isolated. I don't care what anybody says. Something in the milk ain't clean, and I believe that Louis is a fraud, and I think that he's a scammer. I just do. So Margaret and Teresa are trading insults. Of course, Teresa's favorite go-to line, she's calling Margaret an old hag and saying that she's a whore. Again, if I were Margaret, let that roll off your back, sis. It's Teresa. Teresa could never insult me about anything. So now at this point, Andy dismisses Jen Fessler and Jackie, and now it's time for the husbands to be brought out. But before they come out, we see Andy talking to Louie, and he's like, look, Louie, I'm worried about what's going to happen. Just promise me that it's not going to get physical. I'm the one who has to be in between all this. Louie assures him that it won't get crazy. I said, now why are you lying to Andy? You already know it's going to be a complete shit show the minute y'all come out on that stage. 
Like that tension and that hate for each other is so thick. But all the husbands are on the stage and that's where the second part ends. And when I tell y'all that this double recap took everything out of me, I am going to rejoice when the third part is done. I really don't think that I'm going to be reviewing Jersey when they come back season 14. I just can't. Things have to change. It has been a very hard watch. It's just not fun anymore. We are watching a family that's pretty much destroyed. We are watching people who actually hate each other and wish each other harm. It's not entertainment. It's not enjoyable. We are to the point of no return. But guys, that was my recap. I hope you all enjoyed. If you didn't enjoy it, because you're mad at me because you're a Teresa or a Jen Aiden fan, thank you for sticking by me and watching anyway. <laughs> But y'all already know what to do. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you all later. Bye.